Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Mill Mondays on Intuitive Angling. And thank you very much for making some time out of your day to check the video out. And uh, all you regulars that come in every week, uh, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, this is something we do uh, once a week that uh, we usually don't talk about fishing. It's just sort of a, a little break from the fishing videos, talk about some stuff that might help stretch your mind a little bit and make you think a little bit. So welcome everybody. Guys, today we're going to be talking about how, you know, the proverbial saying, you can't judge a book by its cover. I want to get into that in depth as far as, uh, you know, our tendency, it seems like, to judge people more and more over the past 10 years in society. Um, I've got two examples I want to share with you guys, what I'm talking about, and uh, sort of deep dive into this uh, part of the human psyche a little bit and maybe get a little bit deeper understanding with that. Um, guys, real quick, I just want to remind you, if uh, before we get started on the video, I've been, you guys hear me talk about this a lot. If you've seen some of the videos the last couple of days, um, I've partnered up with Tackle Warehouse as an affiliate link. So um, if you guys want to support the channel and you want and you need to get some tackle, um, one of the best ways you can support it is you, to use the link that I provide in my descriptions. That's my own personal Tackle Warehouse link. And also on my YouTube homepage, you'll see that this says Tackle Warehouse, and you can just click on that link and you use that link. Uh, that's a good way to help out here and uh, give something back to the channel if, you, if, uh, if you're inclined to do so. It's so much appreciated. Okay, guys, um, I think that uh, one of the basic, you know, tendencies of human nature a lot of times is we tend to place judgment on people without even knowing that person very well, and we t we tend to. Um, place judgments and place labels on people based upon a lot of stuff that uh, just you see from the surface and maybe comments somebody makes or maybe just an observation by the way somebody carries themselves. I mean, I see that this is sort of rampant and I think everybody is responsible. Everybody does it to some extent. Well, you'll see somebody and automatically you paint this picture of what type of person you think they are because maybe you heard them overheard them make a comment or maybe something about the lifestyle they lead or whatever. And this does not serve anything because um, until you get to know a person deep down uh, from all different levels, <clears throat> you can't really, I don't want to say judge that person because nobody really has a right to judge another person, but you, you can't really formulate your own opinion fully of that person until you know everything about that person. And I, and I want to give two examples here of what I'm talking about um, that really stick out to me a little bit, although I've got tons of examples I could use. First example I want to use is uh, one of my best friends. Um, this guy, we've been best friends since we were little kids, uh, not little kids, but since we were in high school, still are today. And uh, tell you a little bit about him, then I'll tell you about how you can't judge a book by its cover on there. Um, he was a in high school state championship heavyweight wrestler, uh, loved to hunt and fish. You know, him and I, you know, hunted and fished our whole lives, still fish together even to this day. Um, and he was a, a lot of people back then, you, he considered him like some type of a redneck because he chewed skull all the time, wore cowboy boots, um, sort of, you know, rough and tough type guy. And when, when, when I was probably, 19 or 20 years old um he'd always drag me out to the bars and there because in kansas over across the border from where i lived in missouri you could go to these bars when you're 18. so he'd always drag me over to these country bars even though i hate i can't stand country music i hate it but he'd drag me over there and i'd go with him more or less i just wanted to try to keep him out of trouble because he had the tendency that he he loved not that he loved to fight, but he never backed down from a fight and he would always maybe egg it on a little bit. And we'd go out, you know, during a couple of my wilder years back in the day, he'd say, okay, block it. We're, let's go out tonight. And he goes, I'm in a loving mood. And if he was in, if he said he was in a loving mood, he'd uh, usually dance with girls all night and have a good time. And then sometimes he goes, okay, block it. Let's go. I'm in a fighting mood. He'd go out and he'd start a fight or he'd, or he'd like something would happen and he some guy would just look wrong at him and he'd want to start a fight with this guy so he was sort of sort of like that he was just and then he worked in the oil fields he went to western oklahoma for a couple of years and worked in the oil fields you know roughneck and one of the toughest jobs you can get cut his finger off in an oil field accident you know drive the big you know jacked up four-wheel drive pickup truck you know 
just you know you look at this guy and you say this guy is just a he's just a typical redneck man but on top of that he's also one of the smartest guys I've ever met he was captain of the debate team in high school he's a mathematical genius and on top of that he's a liberal he's politically he's very politically liberal social justice that type of stuff some of you never think about that and the prime example of how he is like this he would he'd be like you know if he was in a convenience store or something like that and he he'd hear somebody say something bad about Barack Obama or something you know he'd walk up to him in his cowboy boots and he's a pretty intimidating guy anyway and he he'd tell him how they were wrong if they if they made some comment about him he goes well he'd say actually how that's not right then he'd start you know relaying some factual information because he's like super savvy and super politically smart you know he would like intellectually bully these people on if they said something bad about somebody he liked and if they got into his face and it got heated he would be apt to just freaking spit a wad of skull on your feet and just knock you out i mean that's that's the type of guy he was you never would think about that being that he would be leaning in that direction being such a redneck and another thing i remember one time this has been quite a few years ago we were driving downtown and um this truck passes us and it's just it's this big jacked up diesel looking truck and it's got the whole back window on the truck has got a confederate flag on it he looks over there at that thing that pisses me off and he follows this dude for like five miles until this guy pulls over at the gas station he gets out of his truck he goes well it looks like you're a fan of slavery huh and the guy sort of looks at him he's a pretty big guy too and he goes he goes no it's just heritage and he goes my buddy goes bullshit that's not heritage and he started listing all of the historical facts around how the civil war was fought you know for the south to predict slavery and he he got into details and this and that and by the end of this conversation this other guy that had the confederate flag he didn't know what to say he just got in his truck and left but that's the type of guy he was you know a lot of people assume a certain you know, they would before they knew him they would assume he was in a completely different direction and he wasn't up there but the other story i got this was a deal where um back in joplin missouri i worked at a restaurant called the rafters restaurant back in the late 70s when i was in high school and i usually work you know a few hours after school in the evening and then i'd work like friday and saturday nights i'd go in like at six o'clock and i'd work to midnight you know getting enough money to put gas in my little beat up 14 foot flat bottom boat and there was this couple that came in there every day. They came in for lunch. They came in there for dinner. I don't even think that they ever ate at home. They were in there every single day. Now, this was like the nicest restaurant in town. I was a busboy there. Part of my job was I'd, you know, I'd have, they, we had cloth table, cloth, uh, tablecloths, and I'd have to bring people water and butter in super nice serving trays uh, and just a really nice restaurant and these people this couple that used to come in every day they had they were in there so much they brought in their own personal silverware like super nice silver and pewter and when they, when i saw them come in I'd, I'd have this big tray of their own personal stuff engraved with their names on it and take it out to them and the this guy out there this couple they were probably in their 50s and the 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 man of, of the uh, the couple there he was a very uh i I guess you could say effeminate type uh, feel look to him. I don't mean that in a bad way, but he was, he, he sort of had a feminine quality, like a very meek, very, uh, uh, oh, just to lack of a better term, just he wasn't very manly, that type of a thing. He'd have like these super, like these fluffy lace uh, <clears throat> uh, shirts on and he'd have like a handkerchief in his pocket. You know, his hands were like perfectly manicured and just, you know what I'm talking about. He's just just very, very, did not look like a very manly type person. And anyway, for a couple of years, I served these people. They were nice. And he even had like this real mild, high-pitched voice and that type of thing. And I didn't judge that, but I just, I mentally pictured in my mind what type of person this was. He just seemed like a really meek, mild-mannered, soft person, that type of deal. So anyway years went by and about five years ago now this has been 45 years after i worked in that restaurant i ran into his son 
and we got talking the conversation led and i found out that his dad the you know the guy that i used to wait on at the restaurant he was in the marine corps in, in world war ii and he fought on iwo jima he fought on Peleliu, you know some of the bloodiest horrific battles of world war ii and told me all about it you know his dad was a marine in world war ii and i just couldn't believe it you know and i I, and I ran into him. I happened to run into him about a month later and he was like 90 some years old at the time. And I, and I got talking to him. I said, you know, I told him his name and I said, you know, I used to wait on you through after's restaurant back in the seventies and we got talking and I told him that I'd found out that he was a, an Iwo Jima veteran of Marines. He goes, yeah. He goes, um, he goes, I'll tell you a little story. He said, he goes, when I went in there on the first wave, he said, if you ever seen the Iwo Jima, you've seen those black sand beaches that were real steep. He goes, I finally got to, I got to the top of the beach when we landed there and we were getting hit by machine gun fire super hard on the beach. And he goes, there just happened to be a log that was in front of me that was about 10 inches long. He goes, I got in behind that log and he goes, that saved me. He goes, they were peppering all around, killing people around me with that machine gun. He goes, but that log saved me on Iwo Jima. So I had this this impression in my mind that this guy was like this sort of this milk toast dude, and he was a freaking badass marine on Iwo Jima. So you can't ever judge somebody by their cover. It's just like my buddy that was that's the redneck spitting cowboy spitting skull and hunting and fishing and you know wrestling and fighting. You know he's you know on one side of the political spectrum that people don't associate that with and this guy in the restaurant, you know, that seemed really mild and meek. He was one of the badasses you'll ever meet on in the Marines in World War II. So point of the video guys is uh, try to get to know somebody before you, you know, you judge them or label them like that. And another thing about it is we're not different. I mean, we, everybody have got, we've all got differences in our, the way that we think a little bit, but ultimately, we're all pretty much the same and if you i don't care if you have if you're if you have somebody you completely disagree with about everything in life if you get them out like in a boat or something and you take them away from all that external stimulation most of the time you're going to get along with that person and you'll find out that you got a lot in common but we have we live in such a divided society right now that uh you know people are just vitriol you know to each other and it's ridiculous you know we have to learn to get along and uh you know just be kind to each other that's the main thing the most important thing in life here so anyway hope you guys are doing well we'll talk later